everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Lena and today I'm going to take you through the solution to question 3 from this Leaving Cert higher level paper. So this question is based on complex numbers and let's get right into it. So we're told in question 8 that z is equal to 6 plus 2i. So that's a complex number z. And it tells us where i squared is equal to minus 1. Okay, which is the general rule in complex numbers anyways. So part 1 asks us to show that z minus iz is equal to 8 minus 4i. So let's just write this out. We know what z is. We know that z is 6.2i. So I'm just going to write z minus iz first. 6 plus 2i minus i multiplied by z and we know z is 6 plus 2i. So let's multiply this out. So we still have 6 plus 2i multiply the minus i in here. So minus i multiplied by 6 you're going to get minus 6i. Minus i multiplied by plus 2i is going to be minus 2i squared. Now we know that i squared is equal to minus 1. So we're going to replace i squared by minus 1. So 6 is the same. We can add the plus 2i minus 6i here. So we get minus 4i. And then we have minus 2 by minus 1. Okay, minus 2 by minus 1 is plus 2. So we have 6 minus 4i plus 2, which is equal to 6 plus 2 is 8 minus 4i. So we've proved that z minus iz is equal to 8 minus 4i. So I'm just going to draw a small little box around this. And the points going for this question is 5. So now let's move on to a part 2. So in a part 2 we're dealing with moduluses. So we're asked to show that the modulus of z squared plus the modulus of iz squared is equal to the modulus of z minus iz squared. The modulus of a complex number, okay, so if you have a complex number, z is equal to a plus ib, and a and b are constants, so they're numbers. The modulus of this complex number is going to be the square root of a squared, so whatever number a is, if it's, say, 2, it'll be 2 squared, plus the number before i squared, so b squared. But we don't need to worry about the square root in this question just because you can see that the modulus is to the power of 2 or it's squared. So it's essentially this to the power of 2. So it's just a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's just good to remember for this question before we get into it. So I'm just going to rub that out there. So we're asked to show that the modulus of z squared plus iz squared is equal to the modulus of z minus iz squared. So the first thing that we're going to do is work out the left hand side. The modulus of z is what? So z is equal to, I'm just going to scroll up there to make sure, 6 plus 2i. So the modulus of z squared, so the modulus of z first of all is going to be square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared. The modulus of z squared is going to be 6 squared plus 2 squared. 6 squared is 36, 2 squared is 4, so 36 plus 4 is 40. So I'm going to draw a box around that because that's an important piece of information for us going forward. Now we need to find the modulus of iz squared. iz is, I multiply by z here, we got, so if you're multiplying i by 6 plus 2i. So I'm just going to do it down here again. i multiplied by 6 plus 2i. So that's 6 i and then it's going to be minus 2 because when you multiply i by 2i you're going to get 2i squared and the i squared turns into minus 1. So it's 6i minus 2. I'm just going to rewrite that for myself as minus 2 plus 6i. So iz squared here, the modulus of iz squared is going to be 2 squared plus 6 squared which is again going to be 40. So 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36, so that's going to be 40. So that's another important piece of information. So from what we've done so far, what can we conclude? We can conclude that the modulus of z squared plus the modulus of iz squared is equal to 80. Now let's look at the left hand side. We need to find, first of all, what is z minus iz and then find the modulus of its squared. So if you just scroll up to this top question, right, z minus iz is 8 minus 4i. So it's pretty much done for us, right? So 8 minus 4i. So the modulus of z minus iz is going to be root 8 squared plus 4 squared. That's an important thing that a lot of students fall down in. When there's a minus sign in here, for the modulus it doesn't matter. So it's not going to be 8 squared minus 4 squared. It's always going to be a positive number between the two numbers when you're working at the modulus, right? So because it's z minus iz squared, the modulus of z minus iz squared is going to be 8 squared plus 4 squared. So that is going to be... 64, 8 squared is 64, plus 16, which is 80. So we can prove that z minus iz, the modulus of that squared, is equal to 80. So we have proved 
that the left hand side and the right hand side are equal. So I'm just going to make a note here left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So when you've proved that, that is that question done. So let's move on to the third part of question A. So the third part of question A involves the circle, but it's still very much based on complex numbers because it tells us that the circle passes through the points Z, which is a complex number, IZ, which is also a complex number, and zero as shown in the diagram. And it tells us that Z and IZ are end points of a diameter of the circle. We're asked to find the area of the circle C in terms of pi. Let's go over what Z and IZ are first. So let's just scroll up and see what Z and IZ were. So Z is 6 plus 2i. I'm just going to make a note of that for myself. And IZ was i multiplied by 6 plus 2i. So we remember that was minus 2 plus 6i. So minus 2 plus 6i. Now what we're going to want to do is find the area of the circle. To find the area of a circle, you're going to need the following formula. So I've just put in the page from the log tables here. So it's on page 8. The area of a circle here is pi radius squared. So how are we going to find the radius? What we're going to do is we're going to use the modulus of z and the modulus of iz to find the diameter. How is this going to help? The modulus of a complex number is the distance of that complex number to the origin. So the modulus of z is the distance from 0, 0 to z. And the same with the modulus from iz is the distance from iz to zero. And we've worked that out in the previous question, so we're just going to refer back to that in a minute. We know that this is a right angle because any triangle which is in a semicircle, okay, so we know it's in a semicircle because this is the diameter here. So any triangle within a semicircle is a right angled triangle. So we're then, when we have this modulus or distance and this modulus or distance, we're going to then find the diameter and divide it by two to find the radius. So we know that z is 6 plus 2, 1, okay, and iz is equal to minus 2 plus 6i. And we have our triangle as follows here. So I have d there for diameter. So now what we need to do is find the modulus of z and iz. The modulus of z is going to be 6 squared plus 2 squared, the root of 6 squared plus 2 squared. So that's going to be the root of 40. So that's here because this, of course, is 0, 0. And then the modulus of iz is going to be 2 squared or minus 2 squared. It doesn't make a difference here because it's being squared plus 6 squared, which is also root 40. So now let's use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of the diameter. d squared is equal to root 40 squared plus root 40 squared. So d squared is equal to 40 because the square root of 40 to the power of 2 is 40 plus 40. D squared is equal to 80. The diameter is equal to root 80. So the radius is going to equal to root 80 divided by 2. Now let's find the area of the circle. So we know that the area is going to be pi or squared. So it's going to be pi root 80 divided by 2 squared. So let's pop that into the calculator. We can leave the pi out for a second. So I'm just going to put in root 80 divided by 2 squared and that is 20. So the answer is the area is 20 pi square units. Because so that is the area of the circle as we were asked in the question. For that question, you are going to get five marks in total for coming to the correct answer. So now let's move on to the next part of the question, which is question B. In question B, we're given the complex number root three minus i to the power of nine. And it, we're told that it can be written in the form a plus ib but we're asked to use de Moyer's theorem to find the value of a and the value of b. The first thing now that we're going to do is we're going to write root three minus i to the power of nine in polar form. So how are we going to do this? First of all, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it on the axis. So here you have your axis, okay? So your real axis and your imaginary axis. Root three is our real number. So let's just put this as root three here. And then minus i is our imaginary number. So that's minus one i. So we can put it here, we'll say minus one. So this is our point. Now what we need to do is we need to find R, which is the modulus of this point, which is the distance from the point to the origin, which is zero, zero. And we also need to find theta, which is this angle, which I'm gonna outline in yellow, all the way around to this axis here. Okay, so that is theta. How are we going to do this? We're going to do this using the triangle here. We know that this is root three on top, we know that this is one because it goes down to minus one here, so it's one unit. 
Now we're looking for OR here. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find OR. Then how are we going to find theta? We're going to find theta by finding this angle here. We're going to call it A. And then taking A away from 360 to find theta. Now let's find OR first. So OR squared is going to equal to 1 squared plus root 3 squared. So OR squared is equal to 1 plus 3. OR squared is equal to 4. So OR is equal to 2. Now let's find theta. So A is the angle we're looking for first. So here we have the opposite and the adjacent. So 1 is the opposite and root 3 is the adjacent. So we're going to use tan. So we're going to say the tan of A is equal to 1 over root 3. So A is equal to the tan inverse, bring the tan over to the other side, of 1 over root 3. And we're going to find this and personally I always would find this in degrees unless it specifies to find it in radians because that just makes more sense to me and we know that there is 360 degrees in a full circle. So I'm going to use my calculator to find the tan inverse of 1 over root 3. So I'm going to press shift and then I'm going to press tan and then I'm going to put in 1 all over root 3 and that is 30 degrees. So A is equal to 30 degrees and just a side note there just to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. You can see up here that my calculator is in degree mode because you see the small d on top. If your calculator is in radian form there's going to be an or where the d is there. To change this what you're going to have to do is press shift and then press the mode setup button up here next to the on button. And then you can change it to degrees, number three, or radians, number four, whichever you want to go with. So that's just how you change the mode for this question. So we have A is 30 degrees. So that means that theta is 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. And that is 330 degrees. We have R is equal to 2. And we have theta is equal to 330 degrees. So now we can write it in polar form. And how do we do that? It's in this form, so it's going to be or cos theta plus i sine theta. So let's fill this out. 2 cos 330 plus i sine 330. So that's it in polar form. Now let's go back to the question and we're going to use this 9 here. So because the 9 is there, we obviously can't ignore it. So how do we integrate it into the question? We put 2 here to the power of 9 and we multiply theta on the cos and the sine by 9 as well. So let's do that. 2 to the power of 9 by cos 9 multiplied by 330 plus i sine 9 multiplied by 330. Now what is 9 multiplied by 330? Let's work that out first. 2970. And what is 2 to the power of 9? Let's work that out in our calculator as well. 512. So now let's multiply in 512 multiplied by cos 2970. So 512 multiplied by the cos of 2970, and that's 0, plus 512 multiplied by sine 2970. Let's multiply that. And that is 512, and we can't forget the i. So our answer is 0 plus 512i. We have rewritten root 3 minus i to the power of 9 in the form a plus bi. So we know that a is 0, because this is our a here, so we fill that in to be 0. And b is the coefficient of i, and that's 512. For that question, you're going to get 10 marks altogether. So that's all for this question guys. I hope you found the solution video helpful and that it might have cleared up any concerns you had about the question or any parts that you weren't quite sure how to do by yourself. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you all in the next video.